Show me how. I'm going to show you how to trim out an exterior door. Uh, so we have to move this ladder all the way. That was, you know, retrofitted. This is that combo door I did. I'll try to link to it or I'll link that to the exterior. Oh, that's off. You know, every time you buy these pre hungs they never do them right. You end up having to tweak them out. Boy, look at that. It's off by a good, yeah, 330 seconds or something. Anyways, maybe I'll clobber it. Um, yeah, well, I speak to it. I'll clobber it a little bit. Anyway, so what you want to do is, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not doing a whole lot. Which, what I want, what I like to do, excuse me, and the best way to address this is, the cleanest way is what you need to do is you need to rabbit out the molding. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to rabbit the fat end because the fat end is the end that goes to the uh, wall portion. Okay. And then the tapered end that goes to the jam doesn't need to be rabbited. So ultimately what you're trying to do is overhang this onto your surface, whether it be stucco, wood siding, uh, hardy siding, it doesn't really matter what it is. Metal, you really want it to overlap because what that's gonna do is give you a super clean joint and a better weatherproofing joint. So I put back the wool, the siding, okay, or this, this, uh, insole board underneath the siding. I'm going to close this up. I will show you that and then I will show you how to rabbit cut these and install them. Now, remember I showed you this before. Try to zoom in on this. I showed you a drywall. This is even more important. Obviously, I'm gonna fill it in and paint all this siding like a cream color. But what I did was I cut this just a sliver bigger, and then what I'm gonna do is mark it. All right? Hopefully I don't get electrocuted. Uh, I'm gonna mark it. And here's my, here's my cut, and you'll see it afterwards. Now I'm just gonna cut it with the paddle saw. One of these all cuts, okay? Right here, real easy. Here, I'll show you. Take this out of my left hand, huh? Because I'm holding on to it. 
Okay, there you go. Obviously, you want to try not to penetrate anything that's below that. But here you go, folks, okay? A little bit sloppier than what I normally am uh, used to doing. By golly, usually I should make it tighter, but all right. The molding's going to go over part of that. I'll have a little bit of feel. Fill. Okay, and there's ways to, uh, there's a lot of ways to uh, fill this and fill in the grain. You can just scrape it with a, with a, um, with a chisel. Put fill in there, let it dry a little bit, and then score it with a chisel. Really unfortunate, I should have cut this tighter. crazy with that because there's going to be molding over that the main thing is is I wanted to back that up for you to show you exactly how this is going to work out okay so sorry for the crappy angle that I had up there and a crappy cut quite frankly okay so what we're going to do is what you want to do is mark what your reveal is on the jam, quarter inch, etc. So here we go. So this detail here is at a half inch. So you can set it at a half inch if you want. I'm going to go three eighths. I'll go three eighths setback. So this is an inch and a quarter. So you got inch and a quarter minus three eighths is seven eighths. So what I'm going to want to do, seven eighths is I want to wrap it off seven eighths, half inch. Okay, that's what it's gonna be approximately. Seven eighths, actually you could add a little bit. Seven eighths, because you don't want to have to redo it. So seven eighths, five eighths thick. So what you want to do, hold on. What you're gonna to want to do is set your table saw up. Yeah, so what you're going to want to do, you can do it yourself, sample on a piece of wood, right? Make sure it works out for you. So what I'm going to do is I want to leave 7 eighths, if I'm not mistaken. Could be mistaken. It's at 5 inches deep. It's at 5 eighths depth, okay? So once you get the, your depth right, which is 5 eighths, then you're gonna to have to move this over 5 eighths to the depth, because you're gonna be at 7 eighths on the jam. But you're gonna to have to raise this up, uh, depending on how much you need to raise that up. And then you come over to 7 eighths here. Not 7 eighths, I'm sorry, 5 eighths, okay? So now it's at 5 eighths. I'm going to cut this down realistically to what the size of the molding is. Okay, so now you're going to want to get this high enough. Just below 7 eighths. Or right up leaving 7 eighths of the meat you need. This distance is unknown, unknown depending on what kind of casing you're going to use, brick molding or whatnot, which is what I'm using. So, let's try it. Tad shell. So let's.
that are connected, but it didn't. So let's try it now, see what happens. Here's what I'm talking about, okay? Right here. Now let's see what happens with the sample. All right, so here's, you're gonna make something along the lines of that. This here, this right here, this is your depth, okay? Whatever that dimension is, and I got it at around 5 eighths, that is to make your rabbit depth, okay? Again, this over here will be determining determinative or predicated on how wide your your casing is but that's what you're looking at you got to factor in your setback when that get nailed gets nailed on this is a clean fit and I'm going to show you that right now I'm just going to do the two sides until I well I'm going to fill this in too so I'll show you that okay so the best thing to drive this with is these uh, semi-finished hex screws. Probably you need about two and a half inch. These are two inch. And you can drive them in and they almost leave very uh, little uh, evidence of where you fasten. I've just temporarily put this on to give you an idea of how that looks. Super clean, you cock the back side. It's pretty hard to you're just not going to scribe in the differences of the depth. So that's why I cut it a little bit heavy. And I'll show you that at the end. You just have to caulk it. It's just the reality of it. But you can see how clean this looks. Even with this, this crappy stuff I got hanging here. Okay, it's a really clean look. And it's a great watertight system. Um, here, I'll even zoom in on it for you. I've got this cheap tripod that was laying around from Amazon. You see how clean that is? Super clean. And then here, I'll come over to the edge on here. Look at that. All the way down. Because you are actually overlapping. Okay, let me get rid of this tripod here. Stay with me now. Alright, just bear with me. Dirty gloves and all. Okay. You see that? See how clean that look is? I mean, you get the idea here. I'll show you the end. I, I hate to run these videos real long with you folks, but I like to show you everything. So many videos I see omit a lot of things. I'm gonna run two by four underneath the bottom of that. I'll fill in that uh, wool board just like I did up here and then scab in whatever leftover pieces I got. and That'll be addressed. You won't even be able to tell when I get my hands on that. So there you go, folks. I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so now you can see what it's shaping up to be. Looks really nice. I'm gonna show you a couple last little uh, techniques here. And one of them is the corners, shimming out the corners. So real quick, you, you look up to the left here, it's not quite flush, okay? If I screw it in, It'll be close, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is pull this one back out a little bit, all right? And this goes for in your house too. And uh, I will start this one first, being exterior a little bit different. liberty a little bit more to uh, mess up if I feel like it being lazy. See that? See how nice that is now? So what you want to do is create that flush. Okay? Then come back and again I'm using the same screw, smaller ones. That little 10, number 10 Torx. Okay. Hopefully I can get in here without blowing this out. Of course, you know what? I won't even take a chance 
I'm going to drive a staple in there, okay? So let's do that. Let's be, let's be cautious. It is being covered up by the carport, okay? Now, you really only need one, but I'm putting two. When I pull this out, you can see now it's perfectly flush. Okay, so that's what you're going to want to do. All right, and I'll give you a close-up here so you guys can see. Guys and gals, because we know the gals, they can do a lot of cool stuff. There's no gals, there's no guys. All right. See how flush that is? And you know what's interesting? When I used to go to auctions, I said, you know what? Even if you don't buy anything in auction, you can learn. So for the gals or doctors or anybody who doesn't play around with too much of this, you can see, see how tight the joint is? Looks great. It really came out great. I could, I just temped, so I could put another one in here. And then the back side, this is what the back side looks like. It comes out really nice. I mean, look at that. So I could tighten that up, but once you caulk that, when you paint, you're gonna have to give away a little bit, all right, when you do it using this technique. But boy, does it really come out fine. And that's what it looks like, folks. The bottom, I'm just gonna put a one, uh, two by four redwood. Some that were somewhere along the lines of that piece there that's a temp but the difference is see when it steps out how much better it looks than when it's flush and then of course I'll have it extend out a little bit on the on the uh, casing have it just extend out maybe maybe an inch or so right now it's probably a good two and a half inches okay so I hope you enjoyed this one I'll keep them coming I just hope you guys subscribe and follow thank you Thank you. Show me how. I just showed you how to case a door on retro siding. Now, same technique with stucco, folks. Doesn't matter. Out.